Act Three of Alexander the Great by Jean Racine, translated by Robert Bruce Boswell. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One, Axiana, Cleophila. How is this, madam? Am I prisoner here, forbidden to behold my army march to battle? Is it with me that Taxiles begins his treason thus, in his own camp holding me captive? This, then, is the fruit of all his sighs. My humble worshipper become my master, and, already tired of my disdain, despairing of the heart, he binds the limbs. Nay, but you construe ill the just alarm of one who ne'er succumbed save to your charms. You with a kinder eye the zeal which makes your safety its concern. While round us now two mighty armies stirred with equal ardour for the bloody fray, make everywhere the sparks of fury fly, in what direction would you guide your steps? Where could you find a shelter from the storm, but here, where all is calm and life is safe? Like tranquil port. Tis that tranquillity with its degrading safety I resent. What? When my subjects, fighting for their queen, and led by Porus, fall upon the plain, sealing their faithful service with their blood, when I can almost hear their dying cries, they prate to me of peace, and in his camp your brother keeps a posture of repose amid the tumult, and insults my grief, directing my sad eyes to sights of joy. Would you then, madam, that my brother's love should leave in danger's jaws a life so dear? He knows too well the hazard. And to turn my steps therefrom, this generous lover makes his camp my prison. Whilst his rival risks life for my sake, his valour is content to act the jailer. Happy Porus! How the shortest absence from him tries you sore with such impatience that you needs must search the field of battle to discover him. I would do more. Yea, even to the tomb would follow him with ardour and with pride, lose all my realms and see with eyes unmoved the victor pay therewith Cleophila for entrance to her heart. You need not go if you seek Porus. Soon will he be brought hither a captive. Let us guard for him so fair a conquest that his love has made. Already does your heart in triumph fly to Alexander, and his victory hail. But, trusting to the flattering hopes of love, your posts may prove a little premature. You press your eager wishes somewhat far, and count too soon upon your heart's desire. Yes. Now my brother comes, and we shall learn whose the mistake has been no room for doubt longer remains that brow so satisfied has the defeat of porus written there scene two taxiles axiana cleophila madam had porus been less choleric and followed the good counsel of a friend he might indeed have spared my present pain in coming to announce his fate myself is porus all is over and deceived by valour he is taken in the toils of which I warned him. T'was not that his arm, for to a fallen rival I'll be just, failed to dispute the victory right well, making his foes pay dearly with their blood. Glory, attracted by his brilliant feats, between him and Alexander for a while wavered. But in his anger against me, at last he charged too hotly, and I saw his troops disordered, broken, turned to flight. Your soldiers routed and his own dispersed, saw finally himself carried along with them in their endeavours to escape. Too late of vain resentment, disabused, he longed for succour he refused before. Refused? What then? Your patriotic pride waits till entreaties rouse its energies. Against your will you must be forced to fight, else will you stir not even to save your realm. But to return to Porus, did he not speak by example with commanding voice? Could not his risk put courage in your heart, the danger of your mistress, and the state ready to perish? Go, you serve full well the master given you by your sister. Do what e'er her spite dictates. Treat all alike, and let your mistress share your rival's chains. 
so well you worked your crime and his defeat have placed that noble hero in my heart to be adored ere this day ends i wish to make my love and hatred manifest before your face to pledge myself to him and in his presence swear immortal hate for you farewell and love me if you will now that you know me think not that my vows are faithless look for neither threats nor chains better does alexander know what's due to queens allow his kindness a free scope and keep a throne poor should never have placed in peril at all hazards i myself would wage fierce battle with the hand that touched objects so sacred what my sceptre then given by a foe must be upheld by you shall the same tyrant set me on my throne who came to drive me from it kings and queens when fallen low before his conquering sword have let his generous kindness soothe their woes the wife and mother of darius see how like a brother does he treat the one like son the other nay i cannot sell my friendship flatter tyrants owe my crown to pity persia's women are too weak for me to copy think you i will haunt my victor's court follow him through the world and boast how light the chains he makes me wear if he gives crowns let him give ours to you and deck you if he will with borrowed plumes nor porus nor myself will grudge you these and you will be a slave much more than we i hope that alexander's pride ere long vexed that your crime should stain his victory will by your execution clear himself knaves such as you oft play the traitor twice let not his present favours dazzle you look you how bessus suffered faithless found farewell scene three cleophila texiles you may indulge her in this fury time and the conqueror's pleasure will conspire for your success her rage say what she may will not for long refuse to mount a throne the master of her fortunes you will be lord of her heart but tell me have you seen the victor for what treatment may we look from him what said he sister i have seen your alexander such a youthful grace met my first glance as seemed to falsify the number of his feats my thoughts i own dared not connect such great renown with one so young but on that brow heroic pride was stamped his fiery eye and noble port told me twas alexander for his face infallibly proclaimed how great his soul and with a presence that supports his claims his eye is no less potent to command than is his arm his glory dazzled me fresh from the field and in his smile i read success on seeing me his pride forgot he made his goodness evident instead the triumph of the victor could not hide a lover's tenderness return he said prepare your sister's lovely eyes to see a conqueror who lays his victory and heart before her feet he follows close no more i leave you mistress of your fate to you entrust the conduct of my own if i have power you shall keep yours intact all shall obey you if the conqueror's ear be mine i go then see he comes himself scene four alexander texiles cleophila hephaestion go my hephaestion porus must be found take him alive and spare the vanquished all scene five alexander texiles cleophila alexander to texiles is it then true sir a misguided queen prefers the valour of a headstrong king to you but fear him not his realms are yours you have a prize to offer that may sway her passion sovereign of two kingdoms hers is in your hands go with your vows present three crowns you are too generous tis too much at leisure you may thank me for my care go where love calls you now nay linger not and let the palm of victory crown your flame scene six alexander cleophila madam his love shall have my firm support 
may I have naught who can do all for him? So lavish of the fruits of victory toward him shall I have nothing for myself but barren fame? Scepters restored or given into your hands, friends crowned with mine own bays, the honors I have won rained on their heads, all show to other conquests I aspire. Did I not promise you my strong right arm should soon to your sweet presence bring me nigh? Forget not, madam, that you promised then to me a place within your heart. I come. The power of love has fought on my behalf, and victory has herself redeemed my word. When all around you see subdued, Tis time to yield yourself. Say, would your heart withdraw the pledge it gave? Can it alone escape the conqueror of today Who seeks but that? My heart is not so stern as to remain invincible When all else owns your will. I paid you honor to the glorious strength That holds a hundred nations at your feet, to conquer India was your easiest task, the firmest courage you inspire with dread, and, when you will, your kindness in its turn will touch with gratitude the hardest hearts. But, ah, my lord, that valour and that grace oft wake within me trouble and alarm. I fear lest you, contented to have gained my heart, should leave it in distress to pine, that, heedless of the passion you aroused, your soul should scorn conquest so lightly won. Love lasts not long with heroes like yourself, but glory ever has transporting charms, and, mid your amorous sighs, it may well be to conquer still is all that you desire. How little can you know the ardent love that wings those sighs with which I turn to you! At other times, I own, amidst my troops, my heart has panted only for renown. Peoples and kings, subdued beneath my sway, alone seemed worthy objects of concern. Persia's fair dames, presented to my sight, no better than her kings could vanquish me. My heart, armed with disdain against their shafts, refused to render homage to their charms. Invincible, twas glory it adored. To love insensible, it deemed its loss felicity, till your dear tyrant eyes inflicted a new wound within my heart. The pride of victory is its aim no more but glad it is to boast its own defeat. Blessed if your eyes, melting in tenderness, own in their turn the conquest they have won. Why will you always doubt their victory, always reproach me with my warrior bays, as though the pleasing fetters you impose were formed to bind none but ignoble souls? On strange new exploits I am bent To show the power of love on Alexander's heart. This arm of mine, pledged to your service now, Has to maintain your honor with my own. The trump of fame shall tell in martial tones Of nations to our world as yet unknown, and there to you shall altars rise, Where none are raised by savage hands To gods themselves. Yes, thither victory will follow you, Your captive, but I have my doubts If love will do the same. So many seas between may wash my image From your memory. When ocean bears you on his stormy waves, The whole world vanquished, when that day arrives, when you shall see all monarchs at your knees lie prostrate, and earth trembling hold her peace before you, 
Will you think how a young queen unceasingly regrets you in the heart of her far distant realms and calls to mind how sweetly you assured her of your love? What? Think you then that cruel to myself I can abandon here so rare a prize of beauty? Or will you yourself refuse the throne of Asia that I offer you? My lord, you know that on my brother's will my own depends. Ah, if my happiness is in his hands, all India to his nod submissive soon for me shall intercede. My love for him is free from selfish taint. Soothe, I implore you, an offended queen, nor let a rival who this day has braved your anger prove more fortunate than he. A noble rival Porus was indeed. Never such valor won my high regard. I saw him where the battle raged. We met. Nor shunned he that encounter. Each one sought the other. And so fierce a rivalry our quarrel would have soon decided when some troops that came between us made our strokes fall indiscriminate amongst the throng. Scene 7. Alexander, Cleophila, Hephaestion. Well, had they brought that rash, misguided prince? All places have been searched, but all as yet in vain look as they may. His flight or death conceals the captive monarch from their eyes, but in their flight a remnant of his troops surrounded, stayed further pursuit a while, and seemed disposed to sell their lives full dear. Disarm, but do not drive them to despair. Our task must be to bend this stubborn queen, and thereby, madam, for my passion win your brother's favor. And since on his peace my own depends, let us make that secure. End of Act Three.